So for this video, I'm planning on doing something a little different than I normally do. There won't be any EVE footage in this video. It's going to be entirely about how to use the out-of-game simulation tool PIFA. Probably lots of people out there have used it at great length and are very familiar, but some people maybe are newer to the game, maybe have never used it before. It's a remarkably powerful tool for learning about ships, modules, fits, and their capabilities, and how they might interact. So one of the first things to know is how to get a fit into PIFA. You can get fits from in the game. There's a copy to clipboard option. You can go to Zkill, and there's an export to EFT option. But you have some fit, and it'll be uh, plain text that comes in a format sort of like this, brackets, hull, name, Low slots, mid slots, high slots, rigs, cargo. And you would just copy this, put it on your clipboard, come to fit from clipboard, and it pulls the fit in. And we can see the high slots, mid slots, low slots, rigs. Over here on the right, it tells us we have three turret hard points. One, two, three, we're using all of them. We have an empty utility high. We've used all but three of our CPU and all but 0.72 of our power grid. This is with a character with perfect skills. If I come up here, I could look at what's it like with a character with no skills. It's not great, nothing fits. You can also have your own characters and you can come in here you can log in with the EVE single sign-on. You can fetch the skills, and it'll show you exactly what the stats of a hull would be with your skills, which can be helpful. And then you can even come in here and edit skills and change it from whatever it is to some other value if you're trying to figure out, I want to train in some particular way. Will this make this ship or that ship more effective? Um, you come down here to the hull, it shows the various resistances. There's a toggle to move back and forth between EHP and HP. And if you want to change the incoming damage pattern, right click here and, oh, I don't know, let's imagine that somebody's shooting hail at us. Mostly explosive, a little bit of kinetic. We can see that our shield EHP went up when we made that change, but our armor EHP went down because the hail hits a strong resist on the shield, but a weak resist on the armor. Switch back to uniform. Further down, we've got the tank stats. Right now, as it stands, we can tank a relatively modest 20 DPS but our repper is a small ancillary armor repper, and we haven't loaded paste, so we can right-click, charge, nano repair paste, and the small ancillary armor repper gets a 3x multiple on pasted reps, and so we go from 20 to 60. If you want to overheat a module, you just come here and you right-click it, and it shows the impact of overheating. Now we're up to 78.2 damage repaired per second, Next, come down to firepower, we're doing zero DPS, and the reason for that is we have no ammo loaded. So we can right click, charge, and load our choice of, let's start with void. So we're gonna brawl right on top of them. Frigate fights happen very fast, we're probably heating for most of it. So we heat and we get 262 damage per second out of our max skill. Nope, not max skill. Um, out of our max skill character. No drones, obviously, and then here's the volley. We're not relying real heavily on volley damage in this setup. Remote reps, we're obviously not remote repping anything. And then you come down to the capacitor, and you see we have 412 gigajoules, and with everything running, and the small ancillary overheated, and the blasters overheated, we've got 53 seconds of cap. Could maybe heat the AB, doesn't make a material difference. Coming down a little further, targeting miscellaneous. How many targets can we lock? What's our targeting range? What's the scan res? We can mouse over and see what the lock times are. We can get a pod in 2.3 seconds. We can get a frigate in 1.9 seconds. Sensor strength, how likely are we to get jammed out? 
How fast are we going with this heated afterburner, our align time? If we turn off the prop mod under three seconds, turn on the prop mod, we see the impact. We can see our signature radius, which affects uh, damage application stats, turret tracking, uh, missile application, that sort of thing. Warp speed, how many AU per second, and then what kind of cargo space does it have? And then down here, it's tracking the price of the hull, the fitting, any modifications we have on the character. Um, here's the stuff down here in cargo that we had. If there was drones, we would see them here. If there was a drone bay, we could drag drones over. Um, if it was a hull that can support fighters, like a carrier, a super carrier, we could drag fighters into here and turn their abilities on and off. The cargo. And then there's a section for implants. So if we wanted to see how would an implant change some of the statistics, we could come here, select implants, skill hardwiring, and let's uh, get a cheap gunnery implant and do small hybrid turrets. So we're doing 262 damage. And an implant, this $12 million small hybrid turret SH-602 takes us up to 267. If we want to go all out, get this one, costs a billion, but it takes us up to 277. So you can pull implants in. There's um, sort of the skill hard wirings, and then um, some of you are very familiar, somewhat, some are less so. There's the implants like the crystals or snakes that uh, take slots one through six, but give you a big boost to speed, a big boost to HP, or what have you, and drag them into here and see what effect they have on the overall stats, given your skills, given what's going on. We can take combat boosters. So let's say we're curious how much our tank improves if we take exile. So if we add standard exile, our heated rep goes from 2.39 up to 2.87. If we take Strong Exile, we can get, assuming we get all eight charges out of the SAR, we can get 3.11k EHP, which is just about double if we look at the buffer and the reps. Um, sometimes you can't get all the charges, damage is too high, what have you. Sometimes you get all the charges and some unpasted charges, and so you end up getting even more value out of this. Again, depending on the damage pattern, what's going on. Um, there's a really strong feature as you're fiddling around with the fits. Let's say I decide that I don't care for the T2 afterburner. It gives you a little more speed, but it burns out faster. I can come in here and select Module Market Group. And it takes me over here rather than having to dig through all the modules. It just pops open the one I want. And I want a normal afterburner. And let's say I decide to go for the Enduring. And now my speed is slightly lower. My capacitor lasts for slightly longer. Also, you can't, it's not easy to see, but you can right click in here and come to attributes. And I can't remember if you can see the difference between heat and pipe, or if that's a stat. Yeah, you can. The heat damage amount is different. Um, Usually that's good for one more heated cycle of the afterburner. And I've won fights off of that. Um, but the speed from the Tech 2 is nice too. But anyway, the idea is that you can compare them. You can see what different uh, properties do these things have. Um, often when I'm filling up a ship, I'll just throw whatever modules I feel like on it. Uh, obviously, right type of guns, right size modules. But then, um, see, am I over on... Let's say I started with... Uh, Tech 2 Warp Scrambler, and now I see, oh no, I'm over on CPU, and I, I can decide. I can downgrade the mag, uh, mag stab, right? There's a compact, so I can save five there and give up a little bit of DPS. I could downgrade the damage control again and do compact. That would cost me a little bit of tank. I could think about going from a Tech 2 web to a meta, likewise Scrambler. Um, let's say I decide Scrambler. Sometimes you scram kite with an Atrium but mostly not, so I could do Enduring. That uh, gets me under on the CPU, but has a 7.5k range. Or I could do the Faint Epsilon, which has the 8.25 range, but you don't get the discounted cap cost. 
there's a projective effects area. So if we come back over here and I make another copy, let's say I'm imagining that I'm gonna get my Atron into a fight with some other fit. Um, or, or, or maybe it's a mirror match. I'm gonna fight myself and I'm wondering how fast will I be after burning around? So typically you'd have the afterburner heated for the fight. And then I can just drag this fit here to the projected effects area and it applies all of the EWAR that that fit has. So in this case, a web and a scram, you can see the speed drop down to 686 meters per second. I can toggle it off. Heated afterburner, no web, 1716. Heated afterburner with a web, 686. And I can think about, is that gonna work? What strategy do I wanna use under those circumstances? If I come into this fit and I change the web, so instead of the Tech 2 with a 60% slow, we do Enduring Stasis Web 55% slow. Then we go back to the other one. Drag projected effects again. Heat the afterburner 1716. Slows down to 772. So you can see there the, the difference if your opponent has the one type of web or the other type of web. There's a nice uh, damage graphing tool where you can see, you can set the distance to the target. This is a faction warfare frigate, so we're gonna be fighting inside and uh, can make some more copies. So what what things might we shoot? Let's say, let's say I'm trying to understand, I'm, I'm, I'm new to faction warfare and I wonder what ammo should I be shooting? You can bring the frigates in here and rename them so that you can tell them apart. And so this one's void, already shooting void. This one's null. So I select. Null, this one's antimatter. Select antimatter. As I'm doing this, you can see the properties of the weapon plus the ammo changing. So the void, you can see the range here. See the damage in total here. I'll go ahead, close this for a second. Get rid of the implants. So we're just looking at the raw hull. All right, and so I've got antimatter. Null void, I can see the different ranges, I can see the different tracking numbers. So void as a tracking penalty, does great damage, short range. You can see the short range, you can see the tracking penalty, go to antimatter, tracking's better, no tracking penalty, range is a little better, damage is lower. Go to null, null has a range bonus, you can see the range is even better. Null also has a tracking penalty. But what does this mean from a practical standpoint? When should I be switching between different types of ammos? And I can just drag all of them onto here, do this, and then I get this information. Um, so this, this I'm, I'm presuming that we have no traversal to each other for the purposes of this. Let's say I'm fighting another turret ship and they wanna, they wanna minimize traversal too. So we're just talking about range what ammo to shoot at what range. And it's pretty clear that, and this is not news, but void is best up close, null is best farther away, and then antimatter is worse than both unless you're worried about tracking, and then it's tracking, it's lack of a tracking penalty will shine. Um, but it gives you a better idea for where you might switch between the ammos. Um, can be real helpful for uh, trying to figure out how will a matchup work if you don't know the ships well, don't know their bonuses, don't know what they're capable of, you lose a fight, go to Z-Kill, download the fit, put it into Pypha, play with it a bit, get a feel for why did I just lose that fight? Did they have more DPS, better tracking, better range? What was it that made it work out for them? Um, curious to see if you guys like this kind of content, if you want more of this sort of thing, uh, please uh, insert comments below and I uh, look forward to hearing what you guys think.